Let's just rock it out, huh? Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net and welcome to another very exciting video tutorial. Today we have a uh, fun thing we're going to be doing and that is creating a 3D eyeball that will allow us greater control over the uh, previous method and uh, you know, trust me, it's going to be a lot of fun. So here is a shot of myself with an eye problem. So basically what I have here is my eye which is basically 3D and it's all dialed in so we can uh, watch the video of a crooked eye. Um, I kind of like it just up a bit. Kind of looks like I have an issue. Very cool. So anyway, uh, we're going to create this. Now the trick here is creating a cool 3D material for the eye. So this is what I've created. So basically you have to make a composition that's two by one um, aspect ratio that is and you want to have the eyeball and everything else to go with it so that it can be 3D. So here's where our last tutorial left off. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, we're gonna have a fabulous time. So I'm gonna create a new composition and we're gonna make it 800 by 400 so two to one, two to one and uh, we'll choose OK then I'm going to create a new solid and we'll make this kind of a yellowish color. Start with that. And then we'll uh, bring our eye image in. So here's an image that I shot um, basically that we can use to grab that eye from. So I'll zoom in here. I'll take the elliptical mask tool and we'll just kind of draw a shape around the eyeball. I'll just move it down. There we go. Then I'm going to hit, I guess it's the uh, apostrophe, um, or just bring up the title safe. And I'm going to move this right into the middle. Then I'm going to take the pan behind tool and move the center point to the middle as well. And then I'm going to scale our eye up, maybe about 200% or so. And then I'm going to create a red solid, a dark red solid. So we'll just uh, do that. Then I'm going to take the mask tool again, the elliptical mask tool. We're going to click in the middle, hold down Control and Shift, and we're just going to maybe about there. Then hit MM. We'll subtract the mask, feather the mask. There we go. Now let's create some cool veins. Now there's different ways you could do this. I found this way to be pretty easy and uh, pretty good looking. So we'll create a new solid. Doesn't matter what color. We'll call this veins. Then we'll choose effect, noise, and grain, fractal noise. And what we're going to do is scale this down. And then we're going to contrast it up and then bring the brightness down. Maybe about there. I'm going to go to the effects and preset. We're going to type, let's see, vector blur. So we're going to take the CC vector blur, drop that onto our veins. And then if we increase the amount, you can see we sort of create this veiny looking structure. And we're going to scale this down, I would say, even further. And that way we have a lot of veins to work with. Okay, very cool. Now I'm going to create a new red solid. I'm going to put this below the veins and then we're going to use this as the opacity map. So with the red layer selected I'm going to change the track mat to luma mat. And that creates our veins. We'll put the deep red solid above and that way we just see the veins inside looking good. Now, to our red solid, let's take the veins out of the middle. So I'll take the elliptical mask tool, click in here, hit MM, subtract the mask, and then we'll feather the mask, and then expand it even a little bit. 
Okay, one more layer so we can add a little more detail. New solid, doesn't matter what color. Uh, yeah, red, actually like a little darker red. I'm gonna choose effect, noise and grain, fractal noise. And it will change the blending mode to multiply. And so we create kind of a cool effect. We can, I don't know, that looks pretty good right there. Let's put this below the deep solid. I'll take the elliptical mask tool, draw a shape around here, hit MM. We're going to subtract this mask and then feather it. Then we'll take our deep red, hit MM, and we'll expand it. Well, yeah, let's bring the feathering down on this and the expansion inward a bit. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And also, we may want to change the color of the background and maybe make it a little more orange. because of the color treatment, um, but we'll be able to adjust that a little bit more in a moment. Um, okay, there's a few things we have to do to make this look a little more real. For now though, let's go into our comp that we left off in the previous tutorial, and then we'll take comp number five, drag it out, that's our eye, and then we'll come to the effects and presets, we'll type sphere, bring that out, onto our material and there's our eye here and we want to scale this down so it fits into the eye socket so about here we can bring the opacity down too to kind of match it up but that looks pretty good and you want to make sure that the eyeball is scaled properly and that everything looks normal so we have some shading issues but we'll fix that in a moment let's put this below our mat that we created in the previous tutorial and we'll set this to alpha mat and we'll shut off this old eye and so now we have a new eye and it's looking good so let's go into that comp go to the light settings bring the intensity down to zero then we'll go to the shading options bring the diffuse down to zero specular to zero and turn the ambient up to like 80 maybe even a little more and what we want to do is color correct it so that it looks proper inside of the material so this eye is a little darker green than this eye so let's try to match that a little bit so I'll choose effect color correction curves I'll go to the red channel just Bring that down a click and the RGB channel, bring that down just a bit. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so that looks good. Now our eye whites are a little greener. So let's go to the background layer, choose solid settings. Let's just push this up so it's a bit greener to look right. So Okay, so that looks pretty good now. Our eye is not looking real. It's a little too sharp around the edge, so we want to soften that up. So we'll go to the eye, hit F, and we'll feather our mask, maybe about four, four pixels or so. Now, we do have one problem, and that is we have sort of this dark eye ring, and that's just how it looks. You know, what can you do? And we need to recreate that. So let's make a new dark solid. We'll just uh, we'll use this black here, this dark green. And I'll shut the layer off. Take the elliptical mask tool. And we'll draw a shape around the eye. Then I'm going to hit M. Select the mask and duplicate it. And then, let's see. Turn it on. And I'm going to set this to subtract and then bring the second mask down and bring the expansion down. So I've created just a ring there. And then I'm going to choose Effect Blur, Fast Blur. 
I'll set this to like 10 and it's a little too perfect so we'll add a rough edges to the dark solid set this to about three maybe a little less better yet let's put the blur after the rough and edges let's see we'll turn this up turn the blur down a bit maybe three Four. Okay, and then we'll bring the opacity of this down too. So now let's go into the comp, and that's looking pretty close. So that should work for now. Now we can move the eye into position so that we get it into you know a pretty close spot there. Now let's link this to our left eye null object that we created previously and now it should kind of stay in there pretty well so other thing I may want to do let me see here is take out this highlight so we'll use the uh, paint tool so I'll click on the stamp tool double click on the eye layer um, let's see we'll turn the render off zoom in here bring up the tool options we want the source to be the current layer and we want the duration to be constant and that should be good so if you hold down control and then drag your mouse left to right you can shrink your uh, brush size and we'll just alt click here and then just click once in here um, and just get rid of that and that should, well, I guess not. So I'm going to go to the beginning and do it. But instead, I'm going to hit U a couple of times. And here's our drawing of our, uh, our stroke. And we can just extend this to the beginning. So all the paint strokes that you do in the paint mode do show up as sort of mini layers beneath the layers effects. So that way I can just extend it. Don't have to repaint. And it looks good. I'll close those. Go back to the main comp and now our little glare is gone Then we go into this comp actually we'll turn the specular off at this point so that it shuts off so now we have our fake eye and now we can do cool things with it so let's touch on a few different possible ideas so first of all you know you want to kind of position it into the right place so play around with that but once you get it right you now can control the rotation of the sphere so I can rotate it and create some funky looking uh, you know effects that you know look pretty believable um, you know for for this particular shot um, let me see I might actually bring those veins in a bit closer so I'm gonna hit M on this layer and double MM bring the expansion in a bit almost like get them in there close yeah probably blurred the uh, mat out also so I'll choose effect fast blur maybe like four maybe just 0.5 so yeah so that's looking pretty cool now let me show you uh, how I created that dilate um, the eyes dilating effect is we can just use an adjustment layer choose effect distort bulge and we want the bulge to be just smaller than the dark ring around the eye just a bit smaller and that way it doesn't affect the area beyond it and then you just keyframe the bulge height so we can set that to zero move forward and then just increase it now you probably want to make your own um, eyeball like this black area but you want sort of the the ring of the eye the color part of the eye to sort of animate as the eye sort of you know works like an aperture and kind of opens up wider 
So even if you don't want to use the actual black part of the eye, you definitely want to use this to create the growing effect. And you know, depending on you know how you do it or what you're doing it for, you know, you can get away with lower resolution comparatively. If anything, it's good practice to try to be able to match something synthetically, you know, or match something that is synthetic using just the tools in After Effects because, you know, it can be tricky. Um, the last thing I think we would do is just add some match noise to this shot. And we can do that by just doing Effect, Noise, Match, Grain. Set the uh, mode to Final set the source to the footage main shot footage and let's see maybe I'll increase the uh, intensity of it just so we can see it a bit better anyway it just adds a little bit noise that makes it uh, match with the uh, original footage a bit better so that does uh, definitely something you want to make sure you do when you uh, try to do these kind of effects is you want to blend with your footage well so anyway um, man hope I haven't wasted too much of your time um, I know this tutorial was just uh, more of a demonstration but I just want to show you some of the tips and things that I do when I'm working and hopefully you'll be able to pick up on some of these and expand on them with your own ideas and uh, you know I hope you guys do some cool stuff so that's it. Uh, my name is Andrew Kramer. And of course, come check out our blog and our many great products from our purchase page. We have the Evolution, Riot Gear, Action Movie Essentials, and many others that will get your project jump-started. So check them out. We appreciate all the support, and uh, we'll see you next time.